What I'd like to discuss with you right now is, is, is some of the finishing techniques as you, you'll make your bowls and you'll, you'll get them sanded down to the point where you're ready to go ahead and apply some finishes. Some of the things that I've found to be very helpful in, in, in my own shop and my own, the things that I do. Uh, as an example, if I have a particular bowl that doesn't have a lot of character to it, I may want to actually apply a stain to it. But I found that because as we're cutting a piece of wood and we're cutting that circle off of that piece of wood, obviously we have end grain on two sides of the bowl. Penetrating stains tend to really soak in heavily into end grain. It tends to give you a very, very splotchy bowl. So if in fact you're going to stain it, a couple of that I've had some real good success with here is Aqua Coat. Uh, it's a, it's a water-based stain. It's available in a natural or a clear, and then of course there's other colors that are available. Uh, it's just about anything that you want. Uh, I like to, if I've got a lot of character in the bowl, I may just put the, the clear on. It's a polyethylene gel, and the gels tend to be a little bit easier to control on how, just how deep of penetration you're going to get into the end grain. Especially if you'll take the clear, put the coat of the clear on first, let that dry for about 30 minutes, give it a very light sanding, and then go back and put your darker color on. And of course, that of course will keep the color penetration down to some degree because you just be laying it basically over, over the surface. You will seal a lot of that end grain, makes it just a lot simpler to control. Another thing which I use a lot of are some products that um, a lady out on the West Coast has come up with. Uh, they have a wood furniture and lotion and they also have a wood cream. Uh, the furniture and lotion is a liquid. It just simply is applied with a rag and you just simply add it on. These, by the way, all of these are absolutely food safe. Uh, none of them have anything in there that would cause you any problems. But you can just simply take the wood cream as an example here, or the wood lotion, and just wipe it on. And as you can see, you'll get some darkening of the color as the particular material goes into the wood. And it brings out a lot of the good grain into the wood. The wax material, or the, the wood cream as they call it, is, is somewhat like a wax. It's a, uh, uh, again, I think it's a beeswax product. I'm not absolutely certain, but it is totally food safe. Again, you can put a good amount on the rag, actually go into the bowl here and actually start to apply it. It also will penetrate in there, and it's a combination of a couple of things. As you're rubbing it into the bowl, you're actually creating some friction, which is allowing that material actually to go right into the bowl itself, go right into the grain. And after you wipe it on, you can kind of just wipe off any excess, wait a few minutes for it to dry, and then buff it up. And as you buff it up, again, the heat that you're generating is causing this to take on a very, very nice finish. Totally food safe. No problems with this particular material at all. If this wants, if you want to use this as a salad bowl, uh, it, it'll be absolutely fine. questions we get from people who buy a Ringmaster and are first getting started is, what kind of materials can I cut? Literally any wood will cut beautifully on this. As a matter of fact, we even have a customer, that one customer we know of, that actually makes bowls on the Ringmaster with Corian, which is your artificial countertop material. And they turn out absolutely gorgeous. What I thought I would do here is just kind of give you an idea of some of the variety that you can do. Uh, this particular one here is ash. Has an extremely nice grain to it. And you can take advantage of your grain when you put the bowl back together and build any kind of a pattern that you would like to into that particular bowl. Uh, here's one here that has been stained. This is stained a golden oak. And it adds a little color to one that doesn't have a whole lot of character to the particular wood. This particular bowl here is soft maple. It had a lot of beautiful grain to it. We just kind of let it randomly run right around the bowl. Here's a bowl that was made up out of material that was glued up into a block. And as you can see what we've done here is as we put the bowl back together, we just simply twisted the pieces so that we have no exact orientation. It doesn't follow a particular pattern. And uh, it it's, has a very high perceived value. People like this type of bowl. A matter of fact, it was kind of interesting to me to find that this particular bowl will outsell a bowl, well, like this one as an example, where we've actually taken them the laminated pieces and put them back together so that the pattern aligns, this particular out bowl here will outsell this bowl two to one at a craft show. Uh, interesting to note, so that if you're going to make them up even as gifts, you have some idea what people might prefer. Uh, like I say, material is not a problem. I mean, here's some that was, here's one that was made out of teak. Here's a particularly beautiful bowl that was made out of olive wood. And again, you know, any type of finish that you're happy with. 
uh, a lacquer, as an example, makes a beautiful glossy bowl. And there's nothing wrong with lacquer. Once lacquer hardens, it becomes, actually, it, it is, in, in fact, somewhat food safe. Uh, I wouldn't want to give this to a two-year-old, as an example, who's teething, but uh, probably wouldn't want to do that with any of my bowls anyway. But the bottom line is, once that has cured, it is actually pretty much inert. It's pretty hard to get any, any kind of a, a leaching out of any of the modern products that we have today. So let your imagination go. Uh, as you make up your bowls, uh, some people find that they have a little difficulty with the plug in the bottom of the bowl. And what I do, and then it accomplishes two things. Number one, it makes it easier for me to match the plug. I don't have to be so critical about matching the plug and getting the exact grain and color is I actually have come up with a little medallion which I can actually put right into the bottom of the bowl. It not only hides the plug, but it also tells people who made it, when it was made, and how to get a hold of me if they want to get some extra bowls. So just something to consider. Again, all of the products that have been mentioned here are available, and if you'll contact us, we'll be happy to provide you with whatever information you need as to where to go to get them, uh, how much they cost, uh, any, any way we can help you. Um, if you have a question, ask. By all means, ask. That's what we're there for. That's why we're providing the videotapes. That's why we're doing the videotapes, to give people an idea of the type of things that they can do. What we want to be able to do is to stretch your imagination, because that is your limitation. It's strictly your imagination. The machine itself will do any type of a round container or any kind of a round project that you want to make. Uh, look through the project book. Get some very unique ideas in there that people don't normally think of in terms of a turning, if you will, or a round piece. Uh, very, very nice projects. Try a couple of them. They're all learning experiences. Uh, the worst case scenario, if you're not happy with your product or your project when you're done, throw it away. Uh, I, I think you'll find, though, that most of the projects that you take the time to do a nice job on, finish them off and sand them and all that, will come out absolutely outstanding. And uh, people will be very, very impressed with what you've done. So by all means, have a lot of fun with it and, uh, and just relax, enjoy it. The uh, maintenance on the machine is pretty simple. A little bit of oil on the, on the bars. Again, that's all covered in the instructions. You do that once in a while to make sure that it, we don't get a lot of buildup of sawdust in there and cause the cranking to be hard. Uh, it's pretty simple, and it's just, it's just a lot of fun, so by all means, enjoy.